Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting Beach Horse, and I'm sipping on some black currant tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, chrome yellow, and ultramarine blue. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. Get them in order here. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number five round synthetic brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using for this painting, which will have the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush to mix a custom color. So I am going to be using blue, yellow, and white, and I'm going to be creating this soft, light blue sea type of a color. <laughs> sea foam, sea-ish type of a color. So I've pre-mixed my color right here so you can see where I'm headed and I'll show you how I got there. How I got there was I took white and ultramarine blue and I created a light blue color. So well, maybe I should do this over here so you can see how it turns light blue, a little bit more blue here, and then that was going to be a little bit too blue for me, so I wanted it to be a little bit more of an oceanic kind of summer tropical-y type of a color, so I added a tiny touch of yellow paint into it, and it created this beautiful, nice kind of beachy sea type of um, soft greenish blue type of color. So that's where I'm headed. That's a little bit light compared to the other one that I made, so just add a little bit more blue and yellow to it. And then once you've got the color that you would like, and that's a little light, but that's okay, we're going to use this stuff over here. Once you've got the color that you like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my large brush and I'm going to paint the entire <coughs> canvas with this custom color. I'm going to be using this as the base coat for my sky, for my and for my water and for my beachy land area because it's a color that will be able to um, kind of transfer the, the ambiance and the atmospheric information that I want in my canvas to have this nice oceanic kind of beachy tone feel to it. So I'm going to utilize it as my base coat for the entire, for every aspect of it. I tend to do this a lot, be it um, having a solid base coat for my, for my paintings, especially when I've got a nice large focal area, like I've got my horse coming on in uh, a little while. 
beautiful but this this helps me through the painting process to make areas not so difficult to paint because I've already established a nice tone or base color for the areas with this flat color underneath which helps me to build other details on top of it it makes it easier for me than having a white base underneath so you'll find as you you know go through your painting skill set and start to learn different techniques that this may be one of those things that helps you also build your paintings in a little bit easier of a way you can also block in specific sections with flat colors like this once i've got it on then what i do is i just go back and forth left to right to level out the paint that'll make it so if I have any really thick spots it'll make, make them nice and level or if I've missed any spots this helps me to hit it and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the sky and the base coat for the water and the beach. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush to paint. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did it and just whip out a blow dryer. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a very soft, um, sky that doesn't have a ton of detail in it because I really want my focal point to be my horse so I don't want my sky to have a ton of drama in it but I do want it to feel like a nice summery or sunshiny kind of day so I'm gonna add a little bit of atmospheric dimension in the sky and then the water I'm gonna have um, the the horse is going to be running on like shallow water on the beach so i just want to have some kind of horizon line for the sea or the ocean and then i'm going to have it kind of transitioning down into um the beachy area so we'll do a gradient as the first coat for the water into the beach i'm going to be using my custom bluish green that i created plus ultramarine blue brown and white on the sky, I'm going to be using my ultramarine blue, my um, light greenish blue color. I don't know what to call it. Light. We'll call it uh, light teal, maybe, and white. So I'm going to bring my sky about halfway down my canvas. So what I'm going to first do is just kind of give myself a couple of markers. I'm going to take a tiny bit of ultramarine blue on my brush. I'm going to find myself the halfway point on the left hand side of my canvas. Just give myself a little tiny tick mark and do the same thing on the right hand side. Something like that. That'll just prevent me from going farther than that. It'll be just my stopping point, my visual stopping point. Then I'm going to pick up ultramarine blue plus a little bit of my background color. I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to be using a left to right type of brush stroke. You could certainly, you could be doing circles, you could be doing X's, whatever brush stroke is comfortable to you, feel free to do it. I just picked up more of my background color. Um, you can feel free to use whatever type of brush stroke that you want to create this atmospheric dimension. I'm going to be going a little bit darker at the top and then fading down to a lighter color. Right now I'm just picking up between, I'm alternating between my background color and my ultramarine blue just to get it a little bit darker up at the top. Make sure I have a nice solid second coat for the entire sky. As I come down, maybe I'll pick up a little bit more of my background color. In a minute, I'm going to start picking up a little bit of white so it gets a little bit lighter as it comes down. But right now, just picking up my background color. And you can see as this color is wet, it's a little bit lighter than it is when it's dry. So just if you haven't started your painting yet, just know that that can happen. The paints can look a little bit different when they're wet compared to when they're dry, so you can just mentally plan for that. I'm going to start picking up a little bit of extra white with my uh, background color at this point so I can get it to go a little bit lighter as it's coming down towards that horizon. And again, you can make yours different colors. Maybe I'm picking up a little bit more ultramarine blue to have the left side of the sky looking a little bit different than the right side of the sky. You could certainly put clouds in there, 
feel free to make it into whatever color you'd like. I just picked up a little bit more white. I'm gonna also pick up a little bit more of my background color. So any one of those three colors can get you to a beautiful sky with a little bit of atmospheric dimension. I'm just trying to get mine a little bit lighter as it goes down towards the horizon. And when I get to my markers, all I really need to do is kind of go swiftly across the canvas to connect them. And that'll give me a nice soft kind of transition down at the base of that, um, of that sky. And then once I've got the sky done, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start right in on my base coat for my water. And again, you can make the sky look whatever way you want. I think that this is just gonna be a nice subtle sky behind my beautiful horse, so I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot to it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transition down into my water. Without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up ultramarine blue and brown. So I have ultramarine blue and brown on my dirty brush. I'm gonna go across my horizon line and give myself a dark kind of horizon um, area with the water. So I'm gonna go from one dot to the other. I'm gonna connect my two dots pretty swiftly. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight and it doesn't even have to be a firm line. I'm gonna actually go back and forth like this to soften or smoothen smoothen, that's not even a word, smooth the upper portion of my horizon like this. I also know that, again, my horse is gonna be taking up a whole lot of area on my canvas, so that is going to be my focal point. So as you're doing something like this, a, a seemingly straight horizon line, if it doesn't go perfectly straight, it's okay. My horse has taken up this amount of space and you can always come back and modify um, these edges. Like I know I'm gonna wanna probably modify this right side a little bit, but just softening it like this will help to kind of disguise any imperfections. So just going back and forth, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my, um, my background color just up in this top right hand corner to maybe drop that down just a itty bitty bit. There we go, that looks better to me. And then what I'm gonna do as I'm coming down my, my water is I'm still gonna pick up a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my background color. So similar to how I did in the sky, I stopped picking up brown, but I didn't wash my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of get this to go um, a little bit lighter as it's coming down towards my my um, my beachy area. I think actually I am gonna pick up a little bit more brown too. The brown is gonna help to turn that blue a little bit more on the greener side. You could pick up a little bit of yellow as well. I just picked up a tiny bit of yellow just to get a little bit more of that teal type of color into the water. So I just picked up ultramarine blue, brown, and yellow <laughs> to get a little bit more of that teal type of color into the water. You could certainly use other um, colors. You could incorporate cobalt blue if you wanted to or thalo blue or anything along that line. So right now I'm just kind of going for um, my water getting a little bit lighter as it's coming down towards that beachy area. And in a minute, I'm gonna start incorporating white and brown as I get towards that, um, towards the beach. So it looks more like sand as opposed to water. And we will make this look a lot more um, realistic as we go through the detail process. But right now I just picked up more of my background and white. So it gets a little bit lighter as it's coming into here. And now I'm gonna start incorporating brown with a little bit of white on my brush to give myself more of a um, brownish tinge to this area. You don't need to color it in 100% because I'm going for mine to look like it's got some wet sand, which means the wet sand is going to have reflections of the sky and stuff around it, plus it's also going to have um, the water kind of rolling in. So in this is why I did a, a color that is gonna complement the sky and the beach. So I can utilize it in that beach sand in order to harmonize all of those colors throughout the, um, throughout the composition. So this is looking pretty good to me. I'm putting more brown over here on this left-hand side. And then once you've got this done, 
we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So I just picked up some of my background color plus a little bit of brown just to kind of get this area tied in together. And yours doesn't have to look exactly as mine. I've got more brown on the left, more white on the right, more blue up here. But when we go to put the details on, it will all tie together. So don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. And then once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint waves. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are blue, brown, my custom light teal and white. And what I'm gonna do, I really want to give the impression that the ocean is just kind of rolling into this beach. Again, my horse is huge and is very much the focal point, but I wanna make sure that I have the information to tell the viewer where the horse is running. So in order to do that, I can give these little details to the background to imply where the horse is and what it's running through. So I'm gonna put some rolling waves coming in. I'm gonna start with a little bit of white paint on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have <clears throat> some waves kind of coming in this direction. And what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my white paint and I'm gonna kind of draw a uneven kind of diagonal line. I'm gonna start a little bit down from my um, horizon point in through here and I'm gonna come all the way over here. So this is about two inches below my horizon line over here. I hold my brush this way, so what I'm gonna be doing is kind of pushing the cap of the wave this way, and then I'm gonna um, kind of blend it back. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I take my, my paint, you can even add a tiny bit of water to your brush, and I'm gonna just kind of give myself this like uneven kind of line in through here and then you can take and kind of wipe your brush off on your paper towel and blend it back into the rest of the the water behind it if it's too white or you have too much paint what you can do is wipe your brush off pick up some of those background or the ocean colors so this could be blue and brown and maybe the the green itself so blue brown in my custom green and just kind of get this to blend back into the water behind it. So I put the white cap on and then I blend it back into the water behind it, something like this. And then I can just repeat that step for as many waves as I want. So if I, on my dirty brush, pick up a little bit more white, maybe I've got another one. They're gonna be smaller as they're far away and then they can kind of get a little bit bigger as you bring them down in through here. So this is farther away to the viewer, so these ones could be close together. And then as they kind of come towards this right-hand side, I can get them to go kind of far. I need to pick up a little bit more white on the end of my brush. I can kind of get this to go a little bit farther away from that one. And then just um, bring it into whatever spot on the edge of your canvas you want. And then just blend it up into or back into the water. So something like this will work. You could even put a, um, a little shadow underneath the edge. I call it a shadow. It could be like a wet, um, either a shadow or a wet mark from the wave kind of rolling backwards. So what you can do, wipe your brush off and if you pick up a tiny bit of brown paint, <clears throat> just a little tiny bit, you can take it and just put this little dark, oh, maybe I need to wash my brush. I have too much white on my brush. Hold on one second. <laughs> Washing my brush, pick up a tiny bit of brown paint, and I can put this little wet area right underneath that wave. And this will make it look like the um, <clears throat> wave has, oops, I must have picked up a little bit of black too. Interesting, I'm getting so many extra colors on my brush right now. Um, this will make it look like either the sand is wet underneath, it has, you know, is wetter than um, the stuff farther away, or there's a little bit of a shadow underneath that, that cap of that wave. So you can have fun with making those kind of um, details. I'm just gonna pull maybe a little 
I like that one. I think I'm going to pull another one, maybe somewhere. Again, I know my horse is really going to be st stealing the show here, but uh, maybe just a couple more up in this direction. So if we see a little bit of, um, you know, detail behind the horse, I don't know. I don't even think I need any more, but we're just going to put maybe one more in through here, something like that. That'll work. <laughs> I don't, again, I know how much my horse is going to be taking steel in the show. I just picked up a tiny bit of brown to put underneath this little guy in through here. And if you felt that you wanted more, you know, brown in your sand, you certainly could do that. But again, I've got my horse is going to be taking up this area. We're going to have a big reflection coming down at the bottom of the horse. So I don't need much more detail on my sand. I just put a little bit more brown down in through here. If I wanted it, great. If not, no big deal. And then we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got some, some waves in here, you can put this large brush away. Do any little fiddling that you want. Take out your piece of chalk and get ready for your next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our horse. I'm gonna be using my chalk to draw, but I'm gonna be using my small brush as a measuring tool. So as I go through the process, we're gonna be drawing some basic shapes. I will show you how to make them in the proper size ratio from one another, and then we're gonna connect some strategic markers, and by the time we're done, we're gonna have something that resembles a horse running on a beach. <laughs> crossing our fingers though. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of basic shapes and we'll connect those and we'll, we'll be able to be successful in this drawing process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself, oh, I do recommend, again, your canvas is dry before you start this because it's easier to draw on dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, which I put my horizon line on the center, top to bottom, so I can just find myself the center of that. I'm going to give myself my first little marker in through here. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the right from that about three inches, give myself another marker. What I can do now is split the difference between these two and go up about an inch and a half and down about an inch and a half. What I've just done is I've made four markers that are the same width apart so I can connect them in the shape of a circle. So when you connect four markers like this in the shape of a circle, I think the biggest um, kind of sticking point is we tend to just go in a diagonal line to connect the markers. So just make sure that you round these corners. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but something that you know resembles a circle will be great. That'll help you through the drawing process. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another circle the same size to the left of it about an inch, inch and a half. So I'm gonna come from here about an inch, inch and a half, give myself another marker. Now your circle might not be exactly the same size as mine. If you didn't use a ruler, you might have made it a little bit different of a size. So what you can do is use your brush as a measuring tool and see how wide you made that. And then come to the left and of that initial marker and give yourself another marker at the same distance. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the height, but I want this back one to be just a smudge higher than this one, maybe just by an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So whatever width I did here, I can just find myself the center and just make it up just a little bit higher than that one. So for me, I think it's gonna be maybe somewhere about here and here. <clears throat> Again, doesn't have to be perfect, just something that'll give you, this puts the rear end up a little bit from the chest area, but if yours, and again, mine is maybe a eighth to a quarter of an inch, you could certainly not even do it <laughs> if, it does, if it doesn't work out that way for you. So something like that. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make two more circles before we start connecting all of these to make it look more like a horse instead of just circles. <laughs> I'm going to make um, a circle that's going to be half the size of this up 
to, in, in the head. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find myself the center of this circle right here where we just made this marker. I'm going to go up about an inch and a quarter and over to the right maybe about a half of an inch or so and make myself my first marker. So somewhere in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fancy measuring tool. You can kind of eyeball where the center of this is and then measure to the center of that. That's going to be the width of this next circle that we're going to be making. So this is going to be the width of mine. And then you can just take that and do the same thing for the top and the bottom. Give yourself two more markers and now you've got yourself the main circle for the head. <clears throat> and then the neck, I'm going to make one more circle before we start um, connecting all of these. My next circle is going to be half the size of this one. So if I just kind of make myself a little center point. I can use my fancy measuring tool to see how wide that is and I'm going to make myself another one right in here. So it's going to be a, just um, to give you a point of reference. If you kind of find yourself right about in this vicinity and come to the right or down to the right about I would say maybe an eighth of an inch something like that. It's really close to this one. That'll give you a good point to start and then you can even just do this on a diagonal if you wanted to, something like that. <clears throat> and then find yourself the center, something like that and that. And that'll give you this small little circle in through here. So this one is about an inch and a half. And then this one is about three quarters of an inch, something like that. <clears throat> We're going to, I guess we'll just start with the, the face area. We're going to take this first um, small circle like this and I'm going to, bring down this little shape in through here. This is going to be the bottom part of the muzzle. I'm going to connect um, a little bit. I'm going to leave a little bump in through here from that circle and then connect these two like this. So this gives me kind of like the um, nostril type of uh, bump in through here. And of course, it doesn't have to be perfect during this drawing process. This just starts us. I'm going to then connect this little area to here like this. I'm going to connect here to here like this. <clears throat> now we get to get into the tricky part. That was the easy part. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, I want to kind of uh, shape the whole head or the, the back, the top of the head into the neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself back at this center point in through here and then I'm going to kind of come down, I would say maybe about an inch and then out about a quarter of an inch. Somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm going to put the um, connection between the neck and the back. So I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to give myself a big rounded area up and through here. But so I don't just go really big and um, too big, I'm going to give us a couple of markers. First, we're going to put an eye socket on this right hand side. So from here, I'm just going to go straight up and give myself just a little, a little bump in through there. And then from the head, I'm going to go up maybe about an inch and give myself um, maybe about, that might not even be an inch, maybe about three quarters of an inch. That's as far to the top as I want it to go. So I'm going to connect here to here to here with a big curve. I'm going to take it from here, curve up like that, bring it around here, just kind of give it a nice rolling curve, and in through here. This is where it's going to dip and go back there. But I want to put a couple of ears on first. <clears throat> The right ear uh, on our right side, the horse's left side, is going to be the ear far on the other side of the head. There's going to be a mane with some hair, but I, I want to give myself just a little kind of marker in through there to have that other ear on the other side. And then I have the ear on our side, which is going to come into the head just a little bit like this and like that. I'm going to erase some of these um, guidelines in a minute, but we'll leave them for now just so we can finish the drawing process and we'll get the, them erased in a minute. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to the top of here with not a super straight line but one that is going to give just a little bit of movement so just if you dip it down just a smudge and then just bring it back up that'll give you a nice um, believable curve to the, um, to the back. I'm going to connect this area in through here to <clears throat> 
uh, just a little bit to the right of where we had this marker in through here, just a little bit to the right of that with a downward curve. So I'm going to take it from here, just a nice natural downward curve like this, and then bring it back up. This is the belly, like that. <clears throat> I'm going to put the front legs on first. The horse is running, so the, the legs are up, and we're not going to put the hooves or the feet on because those are going to be all in the splash, and it'll make our painting process easier <laughs> if we don't put the feet on. So we're going to eliminate the feet today. So I'm going to put the far leg on first. That's going to be the leg on the um, left side of the horse's front. So we're back at this little meeting point in through here. This is going to be the bottom part of the leg. I'm going to come up from that about an inch. That's going to be the top part. I'm going to come di kind of diagonally. <clears throat> this, this is where the knee is going to go. So if I was to go straight up from here, just to give you a point of reference, I'm just to the right of that nose. So you don't want it way far out here. You don't want it way in here. Just a little bit past that nose will give you a good spot for the knee. And about halfway between here and here will give you a good um, height and then just kind of connect those two like that. And then I can just bring this bottom part in just shy of that knee, and then I can bring this down for the front part of the leg. The foot, again, will be hidden. <clears throat> the next leg is going to start the top of it. This is the leg that's on our side of the horse. Top of it's going to start there. The bottom of it, the um, like shoulder bottom shoulder area, is going to end somewhere in through here. So this compared to where the circle is, is just a tiny bit to the right of the edge of the circle, somewhere into here. The knee, the leg has got to be kind of um, in good proportion to what you have over here. So if you take however long you did this knee over here and kind of do the same length away from the body in through here, that'll give you a good spot for that knee. And then you can just kind of connect that like that. And then same thing in through here. This is kind of like the elbow area in through there, and this one I'm going to have kind of add a little bit more dramatic of an angle, something like that will work for me on that one. <clears throat> the back legs, I'm going to do um, the far one first, so the one that's on the left side of the horse that we're going to, that's under the body. So I'm going to take from here, I'm going to go to the left of that about an inch and a half, somewhere in through here, and then I'm going to go about a half of an inch more like this. The back legs are built different than the front legs, so where the elbow is here on the back legs, it's kind of down. They're just different. They go in opposite directions. I don't know how to explain it, but they're different, so don't make them look like that. We're going to make them look different. So I'm going to come down from here. Um, I'm just going to kind of come down maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, give it a little bit of a curve, and I'm going to come down just a little bit further here and then curve it like this. Um, I'm going to put the, the little knuckle before the hoof right in through here. So uh, it's maybe just a little bit higher than that. And then just connect here. I'm going to bring this down in like this. And then the, the hoof would be down in this region here. So I'm just going to give that little knuckle area in through there. <coughs> the, the leg that's closest to us, I want to give a little bit more of a butt muscle. So I'm going to bring this area out a little bit further. I'm going to take it from up here and I'm going to give a little bit of a fur of a bigger curve in through here. This is going to this whole back thigh is going to be right in front uh, on our side and it's going to kind of kiss this little knuckle in through here but I just wanted to show you where the top part of it is just like we did on the other legs. <clears throat> the underside of it is going to be right where this circle meets um, th this little center part in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this marker and this marker down in this direction. The counterpoint for this uh, from this leg is going to be right about here. So that's where it is on this leg. And then this is just going to be, <coughs> this front part is going to be right here. So I'm going to take from here to here, connect like that. I'm going to take from here and I'm just going to kind of shoot this down right and touch that knuckle or just pass that knuckle <clears throat> and just kind of make it disappear in my sand. So again, the hoof would be in the sand in through here. I'm going to put the tail and the mane on and then we'll erase some, some of these markers. 
So I'm going to come down from here, I would say right about where the circle meets this uh, part of the butt that I pulled out, right in through here. I'm just going to bring a long kind of horizontal line out in through here, curve it about halfway between here and here. Let's give myself a couple of waves. <clears throat> I'm going to have this whole, um, this tail is going to be really long and bushy. So I'm really just giving myself a kind of a loose footprint as to where I want it to go. You don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. Just kind of give yourself a section where you want it to go. And same thing for the mane. I'm going to have the mane, I'm going to have little pieces of the mane kind of kind of coming out the front, but the majority of it is just going to be coming out the back in through here. So I'm just going to kind of give myself some mark, a little bit of a loose markers to tell myself where I want it to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of water on it to erase some of these guidelines. So I want to erase my circles so that way I don't get confused during the painting in process. There might be some circles that I want to keep, like part of that one that I just erased, this one of the jaw. You could leave a little bit of that jaw one if you wanted to. Um, not necessary because I will guide you through, the, through it when we're painting. Um, I want to erase this one right in through here because that's the ear that's on our side. I can erase this whole big one that's in the center in through here. And I'm just using water right now. I don't want to erase this one because that's the chest to the front leg, but I can erase this one right here. And I'm erasing the ones that are going to confuse me if I don't get rid of them now. I'm going to erase this circle here. I like to make my painting process as um, least confusing as possible. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to leave that one. And I'm thinking that that should do it for us. So as you're going through your finishing your drawing process, if there's any little adjustments that you feel that you need to make, feel free to, go, to do it. Um, know that your feet are going to be covered by the ripples and the splashing of the wave. Um, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk and whatever other utensils away. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our horse. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, burnt sienna, and white. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the tail and the mane uh, with black as the base coat. And I'm going to be creating a custom color for the base coat of the horse. I want my horse to end up looking like it's wet, but it's got black in its coat and like chestnut colors. So I want to kind of, for my base coat, I'm going for a neutral tone that is going to help me to build those shiny wet spots, highlights, and shadows throughout the coat. So I'm going to be going for, I'm going to refer to it as a dull brown <laughs> for my coat for the horse. So we'll be using black for the mane <clears throat> and the tail. I have pre-mixed my dull brown that I'm going to be using. It is right here. You can see next to my burnt umber, this is more of like a, a rich type of a brown color as opposed to this color in through here. So this, what I've done is I've taken my burnt umber and I've added <coughs> burnt sienna and black and white to it, which is black and white is gray. And the <coughs> Burnt Sienna has a little bit of a reddish tone, so that's going to add um, like a almost like a purpley type of hue, but not so much. I'm just turning this so it doesn't slide off. So I'm going to show you how I got there. I got there with black, a lot of brown, a good amount of burnt sienna, and just a touch of white. And the, again, the white is going to white and black is going to make gray, <clears throat> and then the brown and the burnt sienna create this really um, kind of muddled, dull brown color, which is going to complement and help me create all of the nuances that I want in the fur. So this is where I'm headed. Once I've got this color in hand, and yours doesn't have to be exactly <clears throat> the same color as mine, but it for making a dark 
type of um, fur coat like this, I know that I'm going to want a lot of dark tones in there, but I don't want it to just start with black because I know that a lot of my horse, um, I'm going to have it appearing as if the, the horse has black fur, but um, <clears throat> with it being so sunshiny outside and the horse is probably wet. There's so many different color variations in its coat that this was, um, a, for me, a smart choice. So as I'm going through this, I don't need any special brush stroke, but I am leaving a little bit of the evidence of my outline, so that way I don't make my horse too big. I have a tendency of, <clears throat> once my outline is gone, of painting outside my lines, and that would make my horse look way bigger than I had intended it to be. So when I'm doing something of this real structure that I know I want it to look a specific way, I'm very careful with my, my guidelines and my outlines. I tend to leave them <clears throat> until I don't need them anymore. <laughs> As I'm going through um, these legs, I am going to be leaving a little bit of um, the evidence of my chalk mark again in areas so this color is going to be the same as this color so i'll leave a little bit of that chalk mark to tell me where that guideline is i'm using chalk as my or i use chalk as my drawing utensil because it is very easy to erase so that way i'm safe when i'm doing these type of um draw these type of paintings where I want to leave some of that chalk mark visible to help me through my painting process, I'm okay because I know it's going to erase really easy when I'm done with it. Um, <clears throat> and I'll most likely paint over it anyways, but if I don't paint over the whole thing, it's very easy to erase. And I'm just slowing down when it comes to these um, little body parts that I know are kind of important to get in the right shape. But I also know that the type of painting that I have opted to do, I have a disguising element, which is the splashing water. So if you run into trouble and you know one of your legs just doesn't look right, just know that you can always cover it with splashing water. So don't feel the pressure to make it perfect. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of this mark in through here just so I know where this uh, elbow area is. I don't know if it's really called an elbow. <laughs> I'm going to call it an elbow today. Um, and then I'm just slowing down when it comes to going towards those edges. You could, if you needed to, use a smaller paintbrush. Um, the knees on a horse, too, can be a little bit square. So as you're coming around these, uh, the knee area, if you, if you square it off a little bit, make it look more of like a, a squared kind of knuckle, That'll give it a little bit more realism. Um, if not, again, no worries. Mine's probably going to get all hidden with <clears throat> some splashes anyways, but it was worth mentioning that little bit of anatomy there. And if you are a horse connoisseur and know all the bits and pieces and all the muscles and stuff that make up the structure of a horse, you could certainly bring this into a very realistic place and incorporate all of those um, those tiny details into it. I'm I'm teaching just a kind of a simplistic version with good proportions to make it look like the horse is running. But if you wanted to, I mean, horses have such crazy beautiful muscular structure um, that you know if you if you're aware of those kind of details and stuff or know how to um, incorporate them, feel free to do so. I will be giving <clears throat> a little bit of uh, demonstration on how to get the, the, the generic type of muscle structure to appear, but you can certainly bring it into an even further place. Again, when I go up towards these ears, I'm just kind of allow myself to keep some of that um, guideline so I don't forget where I wanted the edges of, of those to go. And if you make them too big or you go outside your lines, it's okay. Up here, you've got the mane. I can help to disguise anything that didn't go exactly as you wanted. And slowing down when it comes to the um, profile of the 
the horse's face in through here. Again, just to try and keep it where I wanted it to go. Gonna just leave a little bit there so I know where I want that jaw line to go. <clears throat> and of course, if you had gone over those, I will help guide you when I, when I go to paint um, the details in. I'll help uh, get, guide you through where those, those type of things would be, like the jaw, we've got the eye socket and stuff that'll come into play. Uh, we've got the nostrils and the mouth and all that good stuff. So I'll guide you through that. I'm just bringing this all the way down to the bottom of the little mouth muzzle area in through here. And now I'm gonna switch colors. I'm gonna put black paint on my brush, just making sure I don't have any areas with too thick of paint. I want the coat of my horse to be nice and smooth. So I'm just kind of brushing out any really thick spots that I might have left. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. <clears throat> I'm gonna put black paint on it. And I'm gonna do my base coat for the um, the tail and the mane. So just black paint is coming on in through here. Now, as I'm doing this, I do want to um, have the hair really look like it's flowy on the tail and the mane. So as I get towards the edges or towards the, um, the, the edges, <laughs> I'm gonna just pull out these little pieces. So that way I've got like little peekaboo spots. We're gonna be uh, using another color later in order to get a lot of dimension in here. But right now, the, the parts where I want there to be kind of see-through spots, uh, where you can see the ocean or the beach behind it, I'm gonna just um, kind of allow myself to have kind of almost streaky type of paint in those areas. You could even use a little bit of water on your brush to give you um, like these little individual type of pieces. And if you paint over your favorite part of the beach, like I always do when I'm doing stuff like this, it's okay. You can certainly, um, you know, put more beach somewhere else if you wanted to, but I'm just kind of using the black paint, allowing myself to have this really full looking tail in through here. And then again, we're gonna be adding <clears throat> other colors on top of it later to give it a lot more um, dimension. That's looking pretty to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the mane, again, just with black paint. So I can almost just ride this right along the edge of the neck like this. And then, <clears throat> and then I'll just pull it out in the direction that I want the longer pieces to go. So it'll be thick where it's meeting the um, head or meeting the neck, and then I just pull it out in this um, directional brush stroke so you can see that it's uh, kind of coming away from the, the neck and then it's just kind of flying in the wind. And I'm not concerned about it being perfect at this point because I know, again, I've got another step coming on on it in order to give it its fullness. Um, I do wanna put some pieces right behind this ear in through here, and then I'm gonna put some right up top in through here, just little bits up in through here, and maybe a little bit in between this ear and the front like this. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a reflection of the horse on the beach. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, my custom horse color, my dull brown, <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe some of my custom light teal. What I'm in essence doing, I just need to incorporate some of these colors down below in the wet, sandy water that's that the horse is stirring up. I don't need to do a mirror image. 
I know I'm going to be having all of my splashes that the horse is creating and ripples in the water that the horse is created. I'm adding those later, but right now I, I want to just have that foundation of the reflective colors from my horse down on this, on the beachy watery area. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm really just going to be going, it, so it's kind of like a shadow slash reflection of them. I'm just going to be kind of going below. I'm going to be making this big mass of darkness in through here and bringing it down to the left. So I have a tiny bit of paint on my brush. Don't worry if this comes out perfect because you, again, you're going to have lots of stuff on top of it. This is just going to give us some um, additional reflective and um, uh, dimension in this watery area that we that we have below the horse. Again, the horse's feet are up. Um, these guys, maybe they're kind of dug in the sand or they're in motion. <laughs> so this is just a little bit of black. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush left to right, not taking up a lot of um, uh, space, but as far as the black, I'm not I'm not overpainting it, just kind of scrubbing it on here, giving myself some really dark areas. Now I'm going to pick up without, uh, I think I am going to wash my brush. I don't want that black to taint anything. So I just washed my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my horse dull, dull brown, and I'm going to put some of this in through here. So just incorporating this as well. And again, you can see I'm leaving some of my my sand and my watercolors, uh, just kind of incorporating these tones into the, uh, into the wet sand. So it is a believable type of um, experience that the viewer is, is seeing. They, they understand that these colors came from here, they're reflecting in here. We are going to be having a lot of burnt sienna on the horse, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now, and I'm going to pick up a touch of burnt sienna. I'm going to have a lot like on the belly area, so I'm going to put some of this burnt sienna kind of in this area in through here just so because I know if we're going to be using it later, something like that. I think I'm going to put maybe a little bit in through here and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, maybe some burnt umber. I don't know if I said I was going to use that or not, but I'm just kind of incorporate that a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up just a little bit of my background light teal, just to make sure that these colors um, all talk together. So when I'm doing these reflections, especially if I'm using them in a water type of area in order for to make sure that they are all kind of talking together and that you uh, that the viewer recognizes that they're in water I take that water color which we used um, <clears throat> this light teal green and I'm just incorporating that throughout my reflection so that will speak to the the water you could pick up ultramarine blue which I didn't say I was going to use but I just picked it up a little bit of ultramarine blue so any of those water colors that you use you can incorporate in here and that'll explain to the viewer that this is wet and again we're gonna have a big splash on top of this but this is just you know getting the party started and then once you've got this done we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the dark areas on the horse body. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I, I, I guess you could refer to these as the shadowy areas. However, I'm gonna be creating dark areas for shadows, but I'm also going to be creating dark areas for contours as well as super black fur <laughs> on like the top of the back. So that wouldn't be a shadow or a contour, it'd just be dark fur. <laughs> so we're going to call it dark areas. I'm using my medium brush. I'm going to be using mostly black and my dull brown, but I might also use a little bit of my burnt umber as well um, if I want a little bit more richness in the tone. <clears throat> what this step is going to do is going to provide a great 
um, starting point for all the contours on the body from like there's a big muscle for the leg that's on this side of the body so we'll have a big like area where the shoulder muscle is defined um, where we'll have some darkness underneath the belly that's going to separate this leg from the body we're going to put shadows under under like in this crevice in through here that's going to delineate this back muscle from the stomach area so there's going to be and there'll be more areas too underneath the chin over on the undersides of the legs so there's a bunch of places where I'm going to be putting these dark areas but it's going to help to build kind of a footprint or a roadmap for all of the highlights of the fur and the um, and the body contours and structure so I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint and uh, and my um, dull brown on my brush. So I have black and that dull brown. I'm most most of the time going to be using both of these colors because it's going to help me to control my black. If I have too much black on my brush, I might end up creating too large of areas for the um for for the darkness. You can always bring the light color back, but I'm going to just proceed with caution. <clears throat> So what I'm going to first do is do some really easy areas, so just to kind of get myself warmed up. So I'm going to start on this leg here. I have black and my dull brown on my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of this darkness on the inside of this leg in through here. So just a little bit. And this is where as you're starting um, these, these shadow making areas or um, these kind of finessing of your colors, this is where you can start to eliminate your guidelines because you, a lot of these areas you may only need to hit once um, or we might only be hitting once with, with, a, with a specific color. So if that's the case, like on this front leg, I might, I'm going to have a little highlight later, but <clears throat> I know that um, I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of additional work on here so if you wanted to start eliminating those um, little shadow or the little guidelines you certainly could I'm gonna have the knee is a little bit lighter this front leg is a little bit darker I'm putting um, just picking up a little bit more of my dull brown so I had a, a darker area up in through here and then a darker area right in through there so that was pretty good and then just putting a little second coat on that fur just to <clears throat> just to give it a little bit of a um, second coat so if I didn't need to paint uh, a highlight on it it's fully covered I'm gonna go underneath this chin right now so black plus my dull brown I'm going to take this right underneath this jaw in through here so this is gonna be um, an area that I'm gonna kind of section off this whole front chest area so I've got this dark area up in through here that's right underneath um, my jawline you can just kind of pull that down like that I'm going to darken this whole front area but I need to know where I'm going to be going to so <clears throat> this leg right here kind of extends into the body so I can um, kind of go above that above this line in through here and bring this into the body just a little bit and then I can take from here and I can kind of give it this long curve that mimics this curve in through here. So I'm going to take this like this. I'm going to kind of almost just bring it almost straight down like this. And then I can kind of give it a little bit of a curve like this. And then this whole front section can get pretty dark. So this is my um, dull brown plus a little bit of black. So this whole front section is going to get a little bit darker. And again, you don't need to go, don't worry about distinct muscle structure at this point, just kind of giving it a little bit darker of a tone. I will um, help guide you through making it look like there's more structure to it or more muscles to it. But right now, just kind of giving this little section. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing for this shoulder area in through here. So about um, midway down this curve in through here I'm gonna bring another little curve up like this so again I just have those two colors on my brush I'm gonna I guess I could take it from up here this might be easier to 
kind of guide you through it. I need a little bit more black on my brush so we can actually see what I'm doing. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring a curve in through here. So what I just did was I kind of separated out this front um, shoulder area from uh, the neck area. And then I can just take this and just kind of rub it up. I'm picking up some of my dull tan just to get that to blend in a little bit. And then just gonna get this to kind of uh, blend in with each other. I don't, again, I don't need it really perfect at this point, just something that's gonna tell me where that, that area meets. Picking up a little bit more black on my brush right now. I'm gonna get a dark area in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit on this leg as well in a minute, but I just opted to come here first, I guess. And I'm gonna bring a curve up in through here as well. So just a little curve in through here. So right now, don't be terribly concerned about getting your lines really clean. Um, we're really just looking to get these dark areas in, which is gonna help to establish all of the structure on the, um, on the horse. I'm gonna put a little dark line on top of this leg in through here. I need a little bit more paint on my brush so I can <coughs> get a smooth, transition in through here, maybe a little bit of water on my brush just to give myself this little top of this leg, just a little bit of darkness up and through there. I think I want a little kind of muscle structure. Maybe that was up a little bit too high. I'm gonna bring a little bit more of my dull brown. Yeah, there we go. I think that was up a little bit too high. And then just a little bit of darkness coming down in through this area in through here, like there's a little muscle area in through there, a little bit of darkness at the bottom of this leg right here. I'm gonna put some darkness on the front of this leg in through here. And again, I don't need, to, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just kind of putting in a color pattern right now that's gonna help guide me through <coughs> um, the details of the, of the fur end of the body. I'm putting a little bit more black on my brush right now. I'm putting some dark marks on this leg in through here. So a little bit in through here on this front part of the leg. Just kind of going right down my mark. Going to put a little stripe right in through here. It's the little, I don't, I don't know the parts of the horn. <laughs> the little back thing, I don't know what that's called. I'm going to put a little dark area down here. <laughs> And then I'm going to put uh, maybe a little darkness. So this leg is probably underneath the horse with quite a bit of shadow, I would think, from the, from the body itself. I'm going to put a big dark area on the front of this leg. So again, this way, if, you know, if your shadows or your uh, waves, the crashing of them don't cover everything 100%, you've got these, this believable structure to the highlights and shadows up here where this back leg meets the tummy. I'm gonna put a shadow in through here. So again, I'm just continuing to pick up black and my dull brown um, to get these established. This I'm gonna kind of bring, I want to know this whole muscle structure back here. So I'm gonna come all the way up in through here. Just give myself a faint kind of curve like this. So I, I can tell the difference between this back thigh, the back rump area and the stomach. I don't know if it's called, I think the, this is the thigh and this is the rear end. <laughs> I'm gonna put darkness down this bottom, uh, maybe inside this leg and outside the leg. So again, just a little lighter or thinner line in through there. That was a little bit too much. <clears throat> And of course, you can just continue to adjust. If you if you feel like you've got too much paint, you know, back it off. If you want to have more control, add a little bit of moisture to your brush. That's going to make the um, the paint flow better on the surface of your canvas, and it may make your paint a little bit thinner, which means it may be a little bit transparent, but you'll have better control with where you're putting it. Um, and if you need to put more layers, great. If not, no worries. And again, this one I think is gonna just get hidden in my wave down in through there. That's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of black up on this rear end up and through here because I want this uh, the fur up here to be really 
black and shiny so I'm putting black paint up in through here like this and then I'm just going to kind of blend it out like this I just keep wiping my my brush off on my paper towel so I don't have too much paint and I'm thinking that that's pretty good we've got all of our dark areas in place uh, we're going to work on our face in a little while just making sure I've got all my designated dark areas we could do a second coat with that base color but we're going to be doing so so much other um, painting on it I don't I don't really need a second coat on that so when you're done with this you can um, we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the face and the little ears we'll do the mane later I just want to tackle the face right now I'm going to be using my small brush the colors I'm going to be using are definitely black, white, burnt sienna, um, my dull brown, maybe some yellow and some blue. <laughs> I guess all of my colors except for my, my custom light teal and who knows maybe I'll use that too. I'll call out the colors as I use them. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish where I want my eye and my nostril to go. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush. And to know where they, the nostril and the eye are going to go, they're going to go directly across from wherever you have these bumps in through here. And maybe down a little bit. Because these bumps represent, like this represents the eye socket, like the bone, or the, like the bone that's above the eye area. So when I come to the left of here, I'll drop it down just a smudge. And same thing with the nostrils. So this is kind of like the skin outside area. So if I come to the left of that, I'll drop the main part of it, the hole, down just a little bit. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a little bit of black paint. You could even put black with a touch of water on your brush, which is going to allow it to be, um, uh, allow you to have some good control over it. So again, I'm going to come to the left of here. And if this is like the top of it, I'm going to drop it down just a little bit, give myself a little um, dark area <laughs> where the nostril is going to be so for me the nostril is going to be nice and dark on that inside corner of it and then it fades out into the skin so what I like to do is just put that dark area out wipe my brush off and then just kind of blend it out into into the skin area something like that you could put a little um, mouth area if you wanted to um, I don't know if you'd really see too much of this one. You could also put a little maybe shadowy area underneath there. I'm going to now put my eye on. So again, just a tiny bit of white paint. I'm going to go to the left of here and, uh, and then drop it just a little bit. So I'm almost um, right at the middle of the top of the head. That's, a, that's about where I've got the eye. And again, it's a little bit lower than that one. And plus we're seeing it at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to do just a little kind of almond type of uh, shape. And then I just kind of pull down the inside corner just a little bit, something like that. Just a tiny eye. We don't need to do much. Um, if you want yours bigger, you can certainly make it bigger. And I like to put soft edges around my eyes, something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use a little bit of this black at the top of my ears so just a tiny bit of black give me a little bit of darkness at the top of those ears and this horse is running and it's having fun so the ears are kind of in these fun kind of um, positions just putting a little bit of black up in through there <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to put burnt sienna on this ear in through here so I can start again to um, get rid of my guidelines. I'm going to pick up some of um, some more burnt sienna. I think I want to put a little bit of burnt sienna on my, my nose as well. So right now I'm kind of establishing my um, little tones of the, of the fur. I'm going to put a little bit on this cheek area in through here maybe a little bit up 
on the side of the, the face and through here. I'm just kind of rubbing on a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe a little bit on this area over in through here. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna uh, wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of my dull brown. I just wanna close off this little gap behind this ear like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a dark area on the top of the face because the way that I have the light source is kind of over on the, on the left, <clears throat> the front kind of flat part of the nose, I want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of black and my, uh, my dull brown to give myself a little flat area on the front of the face. I think, I, yeah, I just wanna make sure I have enough black on my brush. There we go, so we can see. I think I need a little bit more black so we can actually see what I'm doing here. So just right down the, the bridge of the nose and through here bringing it right down to here. I'm even gonna put some right on the front part of the, the nose and through here. I'm leaving a little light area around that nostril. So it looks like the nostril kind of pops out a little bit. You could pick up a little bit of um, your burnt umber. You could really have fun with the color palette that you're using to make the, the colors darker. That's gonna be up to you if you want to use different um, darknesses or lightnesses to steer the color a little bit. I'm picking up those two colors again. I'm gonna create <coughs> kind of the muscle around the eye. So right in the uh, middle of the head, somewhere in through here, I'm gonna create almost like this uh, diamond type of a shape. I'm gonna come around the eye like this, give myself a little dark area coming down kind of right in, in here. I'm gonna color this whole top of the head dark like this. And again, this could be obviously different depending on what color you want your horse to be, but I'm just creating the whole top part of the head pretty darn dark. Um, to establish a dark fur foundation for my horse and I want the highlight or the light source um, to be very powerful. So using this high contrasting colors is gonna help to do that. I'm also gonna add a touch of ultramarine blue to this darkness. I just picked up ultramarine blue. This is gonna make it look a little bit shinier. So I'm just adding a touch on top of um, some of this dark area. Uh, this way it's gonna add a little bit of a sheen to it. So that will help with that. And then I'm gonna start lightening up this side of the face, but I wanna give a little twinkle in the eye. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a tiny bit of white paint. Just give myself a little, little soft twinkle in that eye, nothing major. Just even rub it out if you want to. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. So I'm gonna lighten up this side of the face, which is gonna to help to give some structure to the face. This is the jaw. There's gonna be a little muscle um, in through here. So I'm gonna have it a little bit darker in through here. I've already established this muscle in through here. It'll dip in a little bit in through here. So right now my, my color is very dark. I'm gonna progressively lighten it. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of <clears throat> burnt sienna and white on my brush. So this is gonna create like a light, almost pinky type of um, look to it. And then I can um, adjust it with a little bit of brown or yellow as I go through the process. But it is probably gonna look really light to you right now because it's next to such a dark color. But once we start um, adding the highlights to the rest of the body, this will make sense. But right now, it's gonna appear to be probably almost too bright, but I'm going for it because I know it's gonna work out. You can also use white with your um, light tan, or uh, with your dull brown. So I just picked up white with my dull brown. You could use that as a highlight color too. I'm gonna put some over this eye and through here. So these little um, additional highlights that I'm putting on right now are getting these areas of the face to, per, oops, I just threw my paper towel. <laughs> They're getting the areas of the face to pop out. 
Um, I, you can also, you could really use any combination of, of lightnesses. Like I just picked up my burnt sienna white and a little bit of burnt umber. So any light variation that you want to, um, to establish these highlights is up to you. You want it to be the lightest in this jaw, maybe on top of the um, nostril in through here. And then all the other variations could be uh, a little bit darker. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my brown just to get that to blend in a little bit. And I just use kind of the side of my brush in order to get it to blend in. You could use a small bright brush in order to, to do this blending process. I just kind of move my brush around in a circular type of motion in order to get that to um, be established. But you can, I'm picking up a little bit of brown and white right now to get a little bit more lightness underneath this eye. I might actually make my eye a little bit bigger after I get these colors in to see if I, um, <clears throat> if I like the way that they are um, popping. I might make the eye bigger. I might make it smaller. It, uh, you know, it will all depend on if I like the structure of it or not. I'm putting a little bit more burnt sienna underneath here. I feel like I need a little bit more um, definition underneath this jaw. So I just picked up a little bit of black in order to get a little bit more definition underneath this jaw. Once I've kind of established the, um, you know, where, where this jaw is, where my nostril is, I can really just start to fiddle with those highlights and shadows. Like I feel like I want this nostril to come back a little bit in through here and maybe come have this whole area drop just a little bit in through here. Yeah, that looks better to me. I wanna put a little bit lighter tone on this mouth area. So I just picked up a little bit of brown and white. So right now I'm flipping back and forth between my burnt umber, burnt sienna, black, white. You could even use yellow if you wanted to. You could use any combination of um, your colors in order to get these light tones. They don't have to be exactly as mine. You might want yours to, like I feel like I want a little bit of yellow. The yellow and burnt sienna is gonna make a little bit more of an orangey color. So I just picked up yellow and burnt sienna. So you can see how that would have a different effect on the overall color of it. That's a little bit too yellow. So I just washed my brush and you can add a little hue of it on top of it. So just knowing where those, the, the structure kind of lays, <clears throat> you can continue to play with the lightness or the darkness. The horse can have different values of color throughout its fur, especially when it's wet and it's going through this fabulous, you know, beach area. I think I want this area to be a little bit lighter. So you can see, I just kind of keep elevating the areas that I want to be lighter or darker. I feel like this is getting pretty good, but I might want it a little bit lighter. So a little bit more brown and white is going on my brush. Get this um, area in through here to be a little bit lighter. And then once I've got it pretty well established, what I will definitely do, especially since I'm sitting, looking at it from the side, I know that for me, it's going to it's gonna help me out quite a bit to look at this from a distance to see if I've got the muscle structure around the eye the way that I want it, um, <clears throat> to make sure that I've got all the, the light areas in, in place to tell the story of the shape or the form of the face. I keep lightening this up because I want that dip right above the eye to show up. I want a little bit more maybe lightness underneath the eye right in through here. And then once I've got it, you know, pretty much where I feel, I'm using a lot of brown, just brown and white right now to get the, um, the full shape <clears throat> where I want it to be. Let me just put my head back a little bit in through here. Uh, I think I want a little bit more on the inside of this eye in through here, just to get this to pop out a little bit more. And then, like I said, I will, now that I, I've got everything kind of in, it, in its place and establish where I want the light areas and the dark areas, 
definitely a little bit more maybe muscle on the side of the face and through here. Um, I will let myself kind of sit on it for a minute, see if I want to add any more highlights or shadows. And then <clears throat> once I've got that done, you can see I just keep, I keep adding little, little extra highlights here and there to get, you know, I really wanted that jaw to pop out. I've got my nostril popping out pretty good. I've got the bone right here popping out pretty good. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more blue onto the uh, gray or the dark areas just to get that forehead to pop out a little bit more. So I just added a little bit more blue and a touch of white on my brush just to get just a little bit more uh, substance on this forehead in through here. That was a little bit too dark or too light. There we go. And then she's looking pretty now. Um, and once you've got this done, we're gonna use our, we're gonna use the same small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur on the bot, the whole, the whole horse. <laughs> we'll do the mane and the tail on a future step, but we're gonna finish the fur now. I said I was gonna use my small brush, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are all the colors, <laughs> except for my custom light teal. So I will call them out as I use them. What I'm in essence gonna be doing is I want my horse to have kind of a chestnut brown black look to it. So I'm gonna have some of the burnt sienna. I'm gonna pull that a lot of that into this belly area so it's shimmering in the, in the wet sunshine. I'll pull some of that burnt sienna into this arm in through here, maybe a little bit on the chest. Then we're gonna add strategic highlights in order to show, again, the muscular structure, like on the rear end in through here. The, the neck, we'll be adding some um, little shines of, the, of blue and white in order to make it look really wet and shiny. So I'm gonna start with my darker areas and kind of work my way towards the lighter areas. So I'm gonna start with burnt sienna on my brush and I'm going to be putting that all in this belly area in through here. So it will be more burnt sienna <laughs> or more rusty looking the thicker the paint is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of rub it out so it blends in with the neighboring um, shadows and other colors that I have within the, um, that I've already established. And so it will blend in with those other areas. As you work your way towards like these dark areas, you can pick up some of either the black or the brown or the, um, or the background color. So I'm gonna just pick up a tiny bit of my base color, which is my dull brown, just to get this on my dirty brush, just to get these areas to just kind of blend in with one another. And you can also even have like streaks um, in, in this curved type of way, which would imply the ribs of the horse. So you can really have fun with um, doing that. By layering these colors, what I'm doing is I'm getting it to uh, look really soft and have some, some texture to the fur. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more burnt sienna and put it over on the edge of um, <clears throat> this arm in through here. And again, I'll get it to just kind of blend into the neighboring color by either just letting myself run out of paint or picking up that base um, color. So if I, if I wasn't successful by just rubbing it out, I can pick up some of that color. I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt sienna on this chest area too. And again, now is the time to get rid of any, um, any evidence of chalk or anything, any of your guidelines. So I feel like I have a little bit of guidelines showing in through there. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black just to make sure I get rid of that line in through there. And just adding a nice extra shadow on this leg, which is fine by me. So something like that will work. And I'm thinking that might be all the areas that I wanna establish a good burnt sienna foundation. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my way to the lighter areas. So I want there to be a little bit of um, 
uh, almost like muscles in through here and I feel like I want a little bit more darkness down here so I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint to give myself a little bit more um, kind of shadowy area down in through here as well as kind of establish maybe the chest muscles in through here so I'm just adding the hint of a separation between these two um, muscles in, in that chest. So that's just a tiny bit of black paint helped me do that. Same thing with underneath this chin. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint and I'm gonna put it right under this chin in through here. I'm gonna bring it down in maybe like these little bits of streakies uh, because we had used black plus our um, base T brown in through there so now if I if I choose to use black in other areas I can I can see it because we didn't go full black earlier and I have some of my outlines that I can still see so I'm gonna take care of those right now as I'm coming down this side with a little bit of water on my brush maybe I can get rid of it there we go um, <clears throat> and if you wanted to you could if you felt that you wanted any of this area to pop out even more, you could pick up some of that base color and put it on top of that darkness. So that will give you an even, it'll give you a highlight, but it won't lighten it all the way. So by just kind of adding these little subtle tonal changes, it allows you to create this muscular structure in a believable way because it, you don't need to do it too bright, you don't need to do it too accentuated, just the, these little bits of uh, tonal changes will help to establish that type of appearance on it. So that's pretty good in through there. I'm thinking I, I need uh, a little bit more finessing on these legs, but I'm gonna do it with some lighter colors. And same thing with here and um, on the neck and stuff. So I'm gonna pick up my dull brown plus white on my brush and not a lot maybe just a little a little tip of the white I'm going to lighten up this neck area and I'm going to lighten up a lot of these areas but I'm going to start with the neck first the brightest area of the neck is going to be up in through here and maybe in through here where the where the muscles are going to be so this is going to be I definitely need more paint than that <laughs> a little bit more paint than that so I'm going to bring this up in through here. It's going to be pretty darn light because I know that I've got the, the bright sunshine on it. And I'm just going to kind of fade this down. I know that this is the muscular structure in through here. So I want to, I want to continue with that knowledge and not go too far. And then I can just put the lightness where I want it up in through here. And then just kind of let that paint run out on my brush at, and while it's running out I just kind of scrub it onto the surface of the the canvas so I left a little bit dark in through there so that helps show the muscle I've got these two kind of talking together they don't really talk as well as I want so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my my base uh, dull brown just to get these two to kind of fade a little bit better into one another I want behind that ear to be a little bit darker so just bringing a little bit more darkness in through there. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit more uh, blending in through here before I move on. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go on to, that looks great. I want to do the same thing over here on the rear end. So uh, my dull brown plus white. <clears throat> I want this to be pretty light over here on this rear end part. And I want it to be the brightest kind of on the part that I feel bumps out the most to the viewer. So I feel like that would be right in this vicinity. And there's a um, like a muscle kind of going down in through here. So that's the area where I want to kind of keep a little bit darker. So I'm just going to kind of let myself run out of paint. And if I had too much paint on my brush, I can always I, I just continue to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. That helps me to control the quantity of paint that I have. Um, you could certainly just keep picking up that base uh, dull brown and that will help you to also control the quantity and just get it to blend into the neighboring colors. So something like that 
works out for me. I'm going to do uh, the same thing on maybe a couple parts on the legs. So my dull brown plus white. <clears throat> I want a little highlight in through here. I don't really need to blend these in too much, but I do need to make sure that I've got all, oops, all areas covered. So actually I need to pick up a teeny bit of black just to get this little area covered up in through here. That was unpainted area, so I need to finish that. And I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up my dull brown plus white, give myself this little highlight in through here, little highlight on this knuckle area, maybe a little highlight coming down this leg, little maybe on this guy in through here. So I'm really just kind of establishing these bits of highlights um, <clears throat> for the for all these little tendons and muscular structure. I'm going to put uh, additional uh, color brown on top of this and on top of some of these areas in a minute but right now just kind of getting these bright spots on I want to get a little bit on this leg in through here so again this is my dull brown plus white is on my brush and you could pre-mix yourself kind of a mid-tone if you wanted to but I really like um, blending paint on my canvas. It's a it's a personal preference on my part a lot of times. Sometimes I will pre-mix like a mid-tone, but a lot of times you'll see that I just do it this way because I like having um, the, the multi-tones happen on the canvas on the fly. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Maybe this needs to be a little bit bigger to make this look like it's closer to us. That's looking pretty good. I want this whole area to be pretty light as well as here and up here but I wanted it to be a little bit maybe more of a not so dull of a tone here. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of burnt sienna uh, to the mixture. So I'm picking up my dull brown white and a tiny bit of burnt sienna to give myself a, the lighter area in through here. So this is going to give me my light area on this arm in through here. And again, putting the light where I want it to be the brightest and then just kind of rubbing it out and I've got that burnt sienna as the undertone in through there. <clears throat> I'm going to add again little hues of different tones in a minute but right now just starting it this way I just picked up my base brown again to get this to blend in and again I'm just getting these um, colors to talk to each other and give them the um, get them to pop out of the animal. I'm using the remnants on my brush right now to get this lighter area at the top of here. So just whatever I have for the remnants on my brush is going to get this body to start popping out up in through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up brown. So this is burnt umber on my brush to give a little bit different of a tone to some of these um, areas especially as they're kind of maybe rounding down the body. I'm picking up a little bit more brown to do the same thing over and through here. This again as I'm as I'm adding these additional colors it's speaking to the um, the shine on the fur. So when the fur is wet like this <clears throat> it can take on different tonal values, different colors, and all that stuff. So as I'm doing this, that's what's in my head. I want, you know, maybe the brown on the top of the back is a little bit richer of a color. So I'm adding burnt umber on top of my dull brown that I had earlier, and I can pull it in this kind of curved way, which is going to speak to the, um, the form of the horse's body. I can also bring it maybe on top of this shoulder. I feel like I've got this too light up in through here, so I can just add my burnt umber right on top of that, and that's going to give it that a little bit more sh uh, structure up in through there. I feel like this needs to be <clears throat> kind of balanced or connected a little bit better in through here, so I can use these additional colors to help kind of let one area talk to another, this I feel like needs to be lighter and I want to put more of like a, a shiny color on here. So I'm going to actually pre-mix myself a little bit. I want to use my yellow and my burnt sienna. I'm going to burnt sienna, yellow, and a touch of white. So I'm making myself kind of like a light 
orangey type of a color in order to uh, give myself a, kind of a more shiny, vibrant tone to this. So that's where I'm kind of like a mustard yellow type of a color. <clears throat> I'm going to add that over in through here in order to get this um, burnt sienna kind of base, some nice shine to it. And this kind of ties to that face a little bit in through here. I'm going to add now a little bit more burnt sienna to the mixture in order to get this shine on the body. And I'm putting this where I, again, where I want the, the belly to kind of pop out the most. And it, it, you know, you might find as you're doing it that, oh, it went too yellow or, oh, it went too, too burnt sienna. Don't worry about that. Make your horse whatever color you want it to be. As I go through these processes, especially with fur, I am continuing continually adding and subtracting those colors because as they dry, you know, it might turn out too bright for me or too red for me or too brown for me. So I love adding these these layers in order to get it to um, to that final resting place. This is looking pretty good to me. I, this is a little bit too yellow, so I'm going to add a touch of um, brown and white to it just to get it to go a little bit softer in tone. Yeah, there we go. And again, I'm continuing to use this kind of curved brush stroke in order to get um, those ribs to pop out or the structure of that belly. And horses, they can be different colors from one section of the horse to the other. So that's a great, fabulous thing to, to utilize to your advantage when doing um, their fur. I just picked up a little bit more brown and white. Just want to pop in a little bit more highlight in through here. I'm feeling like I'm coming to a, a pretty good place, but I, I'm going to put some shiny spots with some blue and white in a minute, but I'm, I want to get this body area pretty well established, maybe a little bit more lightness on that head. So brown and white, or not the head, the neck, <laughs> the, the, the neck in through here. So brown and white, just getting a little bit more in through here, getting it as bright as I want. And this, that was just brown and white that I put on my, put on there. And then I just kind of rub it out. And again, as I'm doing this, I keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel to, um, to uh, give me control when it comes to these colors. Because I know that if I, I work so hard at doing one area and then <clears throat> I can very easily add too much paint and it be you know, all for naught after that point. So if I am constantly trying to control myself by using my, um, wiping my brush off, you know, using limited amount, minimal amount of paint. If I have to put 26 layers on, then I put 26 layers on. I just allow myself that liberty to keep tweaking and to, you know, keep manipulating those colors or adding to those colors. You can see that I keep, I continue on these areas that I want to pop out the most, I keep elevating that brightness. I keep putting brown and white. Brown and white right now is my is my go-to highlight right now um, in order to get these areas to pop out the way that I want. And I just keep doing it in a in a gradual way. In a second, I'm going to start adding my real shine onto the um, onto the coat. In a second, here maybe a couple more little light spots coming up in through here, little wet spots maybe on that fur as it's coming up in through here. Maybe a little bit more darkness uh, behind this arm in through here. So now I'm just kind of fiddling. I'm kind of taking these little these little notes and saying, mm, maybe now I want that a little bit darker. Maybe now I want that a little bit, a little bit lighter. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good though. I'm gonna um, now wash and dry my brush. I wanna put some blue so I'm washing dry my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of uh, ultramarine blue and white on my brush. It's itty bitty bit. I want to add some real kind of wet looking spots. I need a little bit more blue so we can actually see it. I'm going to put a little bit on this back up and through here. Control my brush a little bit better. There we go. A little bit on this back up and through here. Maybe a little bit on this neck. And this again is just kind of gonna, gonna kind of speak to the shine of the um, of the fur because we have uh, it's outside 
and the sky is around it, maybe a little bit on this neck and through there, maybe a little bit on these legs, just a teeny tiny bit. You don't have to go crazy, just kind of pop it in every now and again where you feel you might have a little bit of extra shine, something like that. And then this is the point where I would, I would kind of call it for my initial attempt, I would let it dry, step back from it, see if I want any more, you know, chestnut color or yellow or gold or blue or brown, whatever you feel would elevate it. Like I just picked up the base color again. Um, whatever you feel would elevate it to your visual preference is this is the time to do it. I'm gonna let mine dry. I'm gonna step back from it see if I want to add anything in addition and I'm going to be using this same brush for the uh, yeah well, I'm going to use this same brush for the next step so once I've got this done I'll wash and dry this brush and I'm going to get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the mane and the tail I'm using my medium brush the colors I'm using are black my dull brown white and maybe some blue, maybe some burnt umber, but I'll call out the, oh, definitely some white. I'll call out the colors as I use them. So I'm gonna start with black to make sure that I have all of my little frilly, you know, extended pieces exactly where I want. Cause I feel like I want a little bit more on the bangs, the bangs, the front part of the bangs. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of black and a tiny touch of water on my brush. So this, the water is gonna help me to just bring out any little tiny pieces that, um, that I want in addition. Um, it'll give me just those little individual pieces. I don't really need to do much. I just wanna make sure that I have this fully established in through here, that I've got all my little gaps closed off. That looks pretty good. Um, and then maybe a couple of additional pieces back in through here. I think I need a little bit more paint because it's a little too transparent. So just bringing a couple pieces back in through there. And yeah, I don't really need to do much at all with this, with this little guy. So that's going to, oh, maybe a couple pieces down over the, um, the body in through here, just around this neck, maybe a couple of little pieces in through there. There we go. That's fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put some of my dull brown on my brush. This is going to act as a great highlight color for the tail and the mane. The tail has a, um, I don't know if it's a bone or cartilage or the base, the hard part underneath the hair kind of kind of, on this particular horse is coming out to about here. So I'm gonna have my hair kind of flowing off of that that piece. So I'm gonna take my, my brownish color and I'm bringing it from this top part and bringing it kind of down in a curved way. I'm using this as a highlight color to help uh, explain to the viewer the movement of the, the hair I, so I don't want to color all of the black, but I am using quite a bit of this in order to indicate that there is a lot of sunshine, that there's a lot of highlight on this, because I do want it to still read as a black type of a color for the hair, so of the, of the tail and the mane. So I don't want to overdo these highlights. I'm really just using um, this color to explain the direction of the hair as well as um, the, uh, the, um, the light source, the intensity of the light source. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the mane. There we go, that looks good. So on the mane, I want it to be really dark in through here, and then my highlight is gonna be kind of over here. So <clears throat> I can take um, and all the hairs coming out of here so I'm going to just kind of take and give it these little almost curves over on this side of it. I might end up having to pick up a little bit more black because I don't feel like that's colored in enough um, so I'll add that in a second here but just want to 
get this established. I'm going to pick up my black now on my dirty brush just to make sure that I have it's fully colored in at this base. So I have black plus my, um, my highlight color a little bit in through here. I don't want it to go too light, but I still want little bits of highlights here and there. That's looking good. And you can have peekaboo spots where you can see the um, sky through this. That's definitely always my goal when I'm doing these long kind of flowy hairs. I'm going to do just a little bit on this front part. Not a lot because I don't want this front to look like it's uh, got too much light on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up white and burnt umber. So white and burnt umber is going to be my, um, my bright highlights. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to do it in the same direction, but I'm not going to take up as much real estate as I did the first go around. So this is brown plus a tiny bit of white paint. You don't need a lot. And you can see I'm really being slow and strategic <laughs> with where I'm putting this highlight in through here. So I didn't go all the way to the tail, to the to the um, butt in through here. I'm just using it mostly on this curve in through here and maybe just pulling a few thicker pieces kind of coming down in through here, but using it as the highlight at the top where that sunshine is hitting it the most. And of course you can adjust it as you see fit if you want it lighter or darker or brighter or a different color even that's totally up to you and of course you'd want to get rid of any of your um, chalk mark too so white and burnt umber are the color I'm choosing to use for this um, this brightest highlight in through here and I might use a little bit of blue as well in a minute again to speak to that shine but right now just brown <clears throat> burnt umber that is and white is giving me this final kind of brightness and again just bringing the bright where I feel it's gonna you know pop out the most to the viewer and or hit the light the most so just controlling the, the amount of space that you put those highlights in it helps them be more powerful I think that as we're painting sometimes we start doing the highlights and it's like oh it looks so good I love these highlights and then we end up putting them or at least I do putting them everywhere or in too many spots and then that way it loses the impact of what it's trying to do I'm now going to pick up a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and white to give myself just one last little bright oomph on this tail just a little tiny bits right in through here give that extra special shine <laughs> and maybe just a teeny tiny touch in through here and then again I would let it dry see if there's any little fiddling I want to do I definitely need to get rid of some of my chalk mark make sure that I've got all of my um, little skippy paint spots taken care of I just picked up black paint um, and I will be using my small brush for the next step so once you've got the main and the and the um, tail done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get, oh no, sorry, it's our large brush. We're, sorry, we're using our large brush for the next step so you can get ready. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the water splash. Ripples, whatever you'd like to call them, the ground, the water. <laughs> I'm using my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, my um, my base light teal white and that might be it uh, maybe maybe a little more ultramarine blue but I'll call them out as I as I use them what I'm gonna first do is kind of establish a path that my horse has taken so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown and I'm I mean my horse isn't just standing still jumping so I'm gonna put a little bit of a um, a, a path of sorts kind of coming in this direction where it has created lots of ripples and stuff it's going to be splashing the water up 
uh, with every gallop that it takes. So I'm just kind of taking a little bit of brown right now and getting some dark splashes down at the base of the feet. So I do not forget to do that at any time because I don't want my horse to look like it is missing a foot. So I'm just, just going to take care of this right now. <laughs> And, and it can be splashing the, the water every which way. I like using a darker color to start, so that way it, um, <clears throat> I have good dimension in it. I'm just gonna kind of ripple this around, something like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my um, light, uh, my light teal on my dirty brush, get this to kind of blend in. So just kind of wiggling my brush left to right a little bit, give myself a little bit of um, <clears throat> uh, movement in that whatever water is sitting in there. I'm going to pick up more of that and give myself just my little um, splashes coming off in through here. And again, I haven't washed my brush, so I've got some darkness from that brown on my brush. I want to put lots of um, this water splashing up so it looks very energetic. So you can even bring some of this kind of crossing up and in front of your horse. I'm not doing, when I do it in front of the horse, I'm not doing it a lot. I'm hardly touching my canvas, but it provides that great illusion as you're doing something like this. Even if you want part of these legs to show, but one part might not be awesome, then just kind of tap a little bit of this color in front of it, and that's going to help to disguise it and make it look more natural, make it look like you didn't make a mistake that you're trying to hide, but you've got this great color being splashed, this great water being splashed about. I'm definitely going to have some kind of coming up from these front legs up in front of here and because I'm using my watercolor and my background color it's all going to um, look like it belongs together and be harmonious with each other and this is going to be a big splash in through here kind of coming out here I feel like this might I might need to add a touch more oh there it goes I was going to say a touch more brown but I just turned my brush and some of the brown released itself from my brush so we can see it now and you could use a variety of different brushes for to do this you could use fan brushes you could use just a small round but I like my bristles so this is where I'm heading now I'm going to pick up some white paint on my dirty brush hopefully I've got enough clean white to work with and I'm going to start adding just these little white speckles however I want them to appear I can even have some additional um, <clears throat> lightness down in through here so the horse is splashing all around we're going to have you know these lighter areas throughout my reflection they can be you can either wiggle them like they are um, kind of waves of sorts in the in the sand as the horse is moving it's kind of pushing those little waves and it's it's rippling it as if it maybe there's a little bit of um, depth to that water or you can just have it splashing up I, whatever way kind of visually works best for you is, you know, the way that you, you can do it. I like to, you know, sometimes have mine chaotic. <laughs> sometimes it's really hard to stop. So I would definitely, if you haven't done this kind of um, effect, just take it slowly and, you know, do a little bit, step back and say, oh, did I, you know, did I keep the dimension that I wanted to? Did I put it as high as I wanted to. The trick is just to keep it inconsistent. If I did everything the same brightness or everything the same darkness, then it wouldn't have that dimensional element, that realistic type of element. So make some areas brighter than others. Make some areas darker than others. Make, you know, one area have, you know, a bit more volume to it. Maybe, you know, you don't use white everywhere. You just use it sporadically. You know, feel look at it again from a distance and see if it's creating the illusion that you want. Just, you know, proceed with caution, I guess, is the best way to, to say it. And I do want it to look like it's carrying all the colors. So I am now going to pick up some ultramarine blue because I feel like I'm missing that color down here. So I just picked a little bit of ultramarine blue up. And I'm making this water pretty 
kind of impressionistic painterly of a style to tie all of my colors together. So I'm cashing in my creative license when it comes to this water, not intending for it to look hyper realistic. I put a, a lot of that emphasis on the horse. Now I just want everything to look pretty and, and carry the colors together. So I'm just having fun with this. And then once I'm feeling like that's looking pretty good. <laughs> so once you've got it, wherever your painterly eye is happy, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna sign this bottom left with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it. However, oh, my brush is not cooperating with me. I'm just gonna, there we go. You get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful oceanic animal portrait and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.